بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Last time we were talking about the advantages of fasting What do we get out of fasting? And today, inshallah, we'll try to elaborate a little bit more on uh, the same subject. Fasting establishes the sincerity in the soul of a Muslim. When a person fasts only for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, this makes him sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's not fasting to impress someone. He's not fasting to get a raise in his work. He's doing it solely for Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward him greatly for doing this for his sake. There is a hadith now, uh, where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, when we hear this sequence, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah said, we know that this is not the Quran. This is what we call Hadith Qudsi. And this is uh, between the Quran and the Sunnah, where the text itself is from Allah Azza wa Jal, yet the words is from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who has composed it in this way. Therefore, it's not Quran, yet the text itself is from Allah uh, Almighty. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Every action of the son of Adam is for him, except fasting. All what you do is for you, except fasting, Allah Almighty says, for that is solely for me. I give the reward for it. The fast is a shield. Allah Almighty says that fasting is a shield. A shield from what? Does it prevent enemies? Does that mean if we are attacked, by our enemies we just fast and it's a shield does it mean that it protects us from fire it protects us from uh, loans and, 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 and so forth no it's a shield a shield from doing sins a shield from going into hell it prevents you from going and approaching hell the fast is a shield if one is fasting he should not use foul language raise his voice or behave foolishly. If someone reviles him or fights with him, he should say, I am fasting twice. I am fasting. So this hadith clearly states that fasting is for Allah Azza wa Jal because it's between you and him. I could have a, a, a son and whenever I see him in the house, he's not eating, he's not drinking. Do I know if he's fasting or not? No. He would say that I'm fasting father but if he goes in his room what is he doing I don't know if he has some candies or some uh, beverages and he's, he's having it what prevents this laborer who's working under the heat of the Sun in high noon digging the, the digging the ground or, or, or farming his farm what prevents him from taking a sip of cold water what prevents this woman working in her kitchen from uh, eating the food she's tasting. What? Well, it's one spoon. Would it hurt? What prevents her from doing this? What prevents her from doing this is her sincerity, her belief in Allah Azza wa Jal that He's watching. And this is one of the greatest attributes of Islam. How come? Islam teaches you to do things by observing Allah Azza wa Jal and by ha having uh, your thoughts that Allah is watching you. So what, what prevents me from doing bad things is that Allah is watching me. While in other uh, communities, in, in other material societies, I would not steal because the law will punish me. But if the law is not there, if I can go away with it, what the heck? Steal as much as you want. So it's not fear of Allah, it's fear of the law. Muslims fear Allah and they have it in their conscience and that is why if you go to prisons if you go to western prisons and you see those who are inconsiderate inconsiderated or whatever they call it uh, you ask the guys in these jails 
How do you think about these people who came in as non-Muslims and then reverted to Islam? They'll tell you it's 180 degrees change. These guy, uh, guys are more calm, they're uh, more uh, peaceful and good for the society. It transformed them completely to a different new person that knows how to communicate with others, that knows how to deal with the society, and that has a relationship with his Lord, with Allah Azza wa Jal, that governs all the things he does in his life. Also, uh, fasting establishes patience. It makes you tolerate things. In the hadith we've just uh, heard, if anybody fights with you, reviles at you, all what you do is, I'm fasting. See, the only thing that prevents me from hitting you back is I'm fasting. And this makes the one that is fighting with you a shame. Because he knows that you're capable of hitting him back, swearing at him, fighting with him. Yet you're not doing this. Maybe he thinks, oh, this guy is weak. Maybe he's afraid. But when you say the word, I am fasting, I'm doing this for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, he's ashamed of himself, and you learn self-restraint. You know that your strength is not by hitting others, is not by attacking others. Your strength lies in your ability to control yourself. Also, uh, patience in not doing what Allah Azza wa Jal dislikes. See, in fasting, you cease to eat, drink, smoke, or have uh, sexual uh, intercourse with your wife or sexual pleasure in any kind or any form. Yet, this may establishes a lot of things in, in you. For instance, I see a lot of people that are uh, engaged or on the habit of smoking. When you see them, you feel sorry for them. Because if he does not have his pack of cigarettes in his pocket, and he just has the urge to smoke, he would not hesitate and ask a total stranger to give him a cigarette. Now, anyone with dignity and honor would not ask for food if he's hungry. He would not go and beg people for essential things in his life. Why? Because this is completely uh, out of the question for those with dignity. Nevertheless, his slavery to this habit, this bad habit, makes him ask for a cigarette. And this is wrong. Although it's, it's, for, it's, it's forbidden, it's haram to smoke. Nevertheless, how do, do you dare and ask for such a thing? Now, fasting teaches you to be patient because you stop eating, drinking, smoking, doing everything that was permissible a while ago for 16 consecutive hours. So even if you smoke, after you break your fast, in the other months the, uh, other than Ramadan, if you have the urge to smoke and you want to ask, a, ask for, a, for, for a cigarette, you won't because you're able to control yourself for a whole 16 hours, 15 or 17 hours. So it builds in you this patience and in, 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 in tolerance and to, uh, it, it teaches you to stay away from uh, things that may humiliate you such as a cigarette. Also one of the advantages of fasting is that it reminds you of being thankful. You will usually thank those who do uh, favors to us. When, 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 when my dad gives me money, my allowance, I say thank you. When my boss gives me a raise, I say, thank you. When my wife cooks the food for me, I would say, why is the salt not there? No, no. I would say, thank you. I would be grateful for my wife because she did something, she did me a favor. Now, look at yourself. Look at the environment you're living in. Look at all the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal on you. He casted all of these blessings to you because you are his servant. And he loves you. He gave you food. He gave you three meals a day. Well, some of us take seven meals a day. Who's counting? He gives you a shelter. He gives you everything you want. Everything you ask him for, he has given you. But we usually look at the negative side. Okay, I made a request for 100 things. All I, I got was 98. 
where are the remaining two? We always look at the negative side. We are in blesses of Allah Azza wa So many of them. Ramadan teaches you to be thankful for these blessings. How? Simply by depriving you from some. See, you never imagine the use and, 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 and the degree of this blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal upon you until it goes. I enjoy my sight. I enjoy looking at things. Although I have my specs on, but I enjoy looking at things. Do I appreciate this blessing of Allah, this ni'mah? Do I appreciate it? Well, turn off the light. It's completely dark. Now I appreciate it. That is why I make lots of sins by sending my, uh, my gazing here and looking there. Ooh, nice. Everything uh, that is forbidden, I do it with my sight. Although it's a blessing of Allah. But how about if I was deprived of it? Then I say, oh Allah, I'm sorry. Listen, I didn't know it was that serious. Can I have it back again, please? The same thing is with fasting. Now we have tons of tons of food. Yeah, and for example, if you stop buying food, how long do you think that the food in your cabinet, in your kitchen, would last a month? Let's say 10 days. No, it lasts for more than that, I know. But do you appreciate that blessing? A lot of people say, yes, we do. Okay, let me look at uh, uh, the, the closest junkyard. Let me look at your trash can. Will, will I find anything there? I'll find half a chicken. I'll find chunks of meat. I'll find rice. I'll find food. Why dare you throw it there? I don't, I don't need it. I ate what I want, and I throw the rest at the trash can. No. Now, Islam teaches you discipline. It teaches you that this food is essential. It's a blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal. You're deprived of, it, deprived of it. Now you know how important that to your uh, uh, life and that is why we are told not to eat excessively. One of the advantages of fasting is that it reminds you of being thankful. You, we usually thank those who do uh, favors to us. When, 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 when my dad gives me money, my allowance, I say, thank you. When my boss gives me a raise, I say, thank you. When my wife cooks the food for me, I would say, why is the salt not there? No, no. I would say, thank you. I'll be grateful for my wife because she did something, she did me a favor. Now, look at yourself. Look at the environment you're living in. Look at all the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal on you. He casted all of these blessings to you because you are his servant and he loves you. He gave you food. He gave you three meals a day. Well, some of us take seven meals a day. Who's counting? He gives you a shelter. He gives you everything you want. Everything you ask him for, he has given you. But we usually look at the negative side. Okay, I made a request for 100 things. All I, I got was 98. Where are the remaining two? We always look at the negative side. We are in blesses of Allah Azza wa So many of them. Ramadan teaches you to be thankful for these blessings. How? Simply by depriving you from some. See, you never imagine the use and, 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 and the degree of this blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal upon you until it goes. I enjoy my sight. I enjoy looking at things. Although I have my specs on, but I enjoy looking at things. Do I appreciate this blessing of Allah, this ni'mah? Do I appreciate it? Well, turn off the light. It's completely dark. Now I appreciate it. That is why I make lots of sins by sending my, uh, my gazing here and looking there. Ooh, nice. Everything uh, that is forbidden, I do it with my sight. Although it's a blessing of Allah. But how about if I was deprived of it? Then I say, oh Allah, I'm sorry. Listen, I didn't know it was that serious. Can I have it back again, please? The same thing is with fasting. Now we have tons of tons of food. Yeah, and for example, if you stop buying food, how long do you think that the food in your cabinet, in your kitchen, would last a month? Let's say 10 days. No, it lasts for more than that, I know. But do you appreciate that blessing? A lot of people say, yes, we do. Okay, let me look at uh, uh, 
uh, uh, the closest junkyard. Let me look at your trash can. Will, will I find anything there? I'll find half a chicken. I'll find chunks of meat. I'll find rice. I'll find food. Why dare you throw it there? I don't, I don't need it. I ate what I want, and I throw the rest at the trash can. No. No, Islam teaches you discipline. It teaches you that this food is essential. It's a blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal. You're deprived of, it, deprived of it. Now you know how important that to your uh, uh, life, and that is why we are told not to eat excessively. Eat what you need, but don't make that as an excessive habit and uh, doing it and over uh, doing it. There are, of course, uh, one of the things that uh, Islam establishes by fasting in your, yourself, that to be kind to the poor. Be, being kind to them is a sign of accepting your uh, fasting. Um, there are a few things uh, a bit more, but I think this is all the time we have for today's lesson. Uh, I don't know if you have any questions, any of you? Yes. yes. Uh, I just want to ask your eminence if you agree with this conception or, or not. Some scholars say that one can practice all the five pillars of Islam during performing a prayer itself. This, including fasting itself, means that we can practice fasting every day. Uh, my question is, do you agree with this? And if yes, how far is it that fasting can be practiced during prayer itself? Thank you. Um, this is an issue uh, of argument. One can argue uh, about this. I, I do not recall any scholar saying such an allegation. Nevertheless, one could see that the linguistic meaning of fasting is there in prayer because you don't speak, you don't talk, you don't move except in the um, manner that we're told to do in prayer. Uh, you can clearly see the pillar of testifying that there is no God but Allah and that the Prophet ﷺ is his messenger by uh, doing that practicing it, saying it in, in, in your prayer. But how can you perform zakah during prayer? How can you perform pilgrimage during your daily five prayers? This is uh, not acceptable. Again, we said that the linguistic meaning of the word psalm, fasting, is to abstain, to refrain, to stop doing these things. This is applicable in uh, prayer when you don't talk. Nevertheless, we cannot say that this is fasting. Because in Islam, fasting has a definite meaning. It is forbidden for someone to say, today uh, I vow to fast three days standing up and not shading, sitting, just standing in the sun without having any shades uh, on top of me. This is forbidden. The Prophet ﷺ saw someone by the name of Israel doing that and he told him, let him break his fast, let him speak, let him sit down, and let him sit down in the shade. This is not Islamic, it's not acceptable. Therefore, you can practice fasting if you're so interested in doing that by performing preferable fasting. You can either fast Mondays, Thursdays, you can fast the 13th, 14th, and 15th of every month, lunar month that is. You can uh, fast uh, a day and break the second day, like uh, Sayyam Dawood, the fasting of David, may peace be upon him. This, is, can, this can be practiced, but you cannot engage something that was not there at the Prophet ﷺ and say that this is fasting. While praying, I'm fasting, I'm performing zakah, I'm making my pilgrimage, and doing this and that. Any more questions? Yes, please. Your Eminence, I've talked about the uh, spiritual advantages that we get from fasting. Mm -hmm. like the forgiveness of sins, like teaching uh, patience, uh, like closeness to Allah. Would you kindly uh, give us a brief talk about the uh, physical benefits that we get from fasting? In other words, what is my body is going to benefit from fasting? Um, there are definitely uh, physical benefits you gain by fasting. But the problem is that you always have to bear in mind that you're doing this for the sake of Allah, not for the sake of your fitness. See, a lot of people who are obese or are a little bit overweight would say, oh, okay, I'm going to fast tomorrow. Why? So I'm, I'm overweight. Is this the reason? Said, well, and because it's, 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 it's a form of worship. I'm, I want to get some reward. This is 
not acceptable. You have to have your intention for Allah Azza wa Jal 100%. Because Allah Azza wa Jal says in Al Hadith Al Qudsi that I am the richest among all and I do not accept any associate with me. Whoever commits, whoever performs an action and associates other with me, I will abandon him and what he has done. So Allah does not accept anything unless it is 100% for him. So you should go on with the intention of uh, doing that for the sake of Allah Azza wa Yet there are physical advantages. Fasting helps your digestive system. It helps you to keep uh, your kidneys uh, properly intact because it gives it uh, about 15, 16 hours break. And if you have a machine working 24 hours, it is maintenance-wise uh, preferable to give it a break for uh, maintenance and checkup and give it time to rest. It is good for the liver because it's not working for a period of time. It's taking a time of break. This is what they call preventive uh, maintenance. It's good for the teeth. It's clean, it's pure, it has its, uh, its time to stay away from things that cause cavities. It's good for the gum, it's good for obesity, of course, because then you, you will, will monitor the, the amount of food, and a lot of people fall in the same mistake. They refrain from eating and drinking for a whole uh, day, 16, 17 hours, but the minute you see their table for breaking their fast, oh, Ya Allah, SubhanAllah, Azza wa Jal, it is filled with food of three days. And the minute they hear the cannon going off, uh, or they, they hear the, the adhan, they start eating and eating and eating until they are stuffed, like stuffed ducks. They go to Maghrib prayer, they can't even perform a, a, a full rukur. They can't bow. Why? They say, well, if I do that, I'm going to throw up. And they go home and just, they just ask for the desserts, Um Ali and so on, and they keep on stuffing themselves until it's Isha prayer. When Isha prayer comes, it, they raise the, the white flag. I can't go on. I can, okay, pray taraweeh. Say, well, I'll pray two rak'ahs. And then, oh, got problem, knee problem, back problem, stomach problem. And they go on after that, they go to, to their houses, spend the night chit-chatting, doing things. Fajr prayer, I'm too tired. Dhuhr, he's asleep. Asr, he's dead, tired, hungry. So this is not Islamic, uh, all in all. Islam teaches you to uh, preserve, to monitor your uh, food, your diet. Eat little, but what is, whatever is enough for you. But don't eat everything. Don't eat your, your brothers and sisters. Eat what is sufficient to give you power to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And people are not doing this in Ramadan. That is why their digestive system is not working properly. But if we do fast as we're supposed to do, we will be in excellent health, alhamdulillah, and we will be fulfilling Allah's uh, orders. I think uh, this is all the time we have for today's uh, lesson. And until we meet, inshallah, next time, we will go into details into the virtues of Ramadan, not fasting, the virtues of uh, Ramadan. Until we meet, inshallah, fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.